Janine. Known officially as the Poison Ninja Master, Janine is the current Poison type gym leader of the Fuchsia City Gym in the Kanto region. Janine shares her official title with her father, who we eventually find out is Koga, the previous gym leader of the Fuchsia City Gym, who is now an Elite Four member. Like her father, Janine is extremely ambitious and dedicated to her role as gym leader. Not only does she aspire to fulfill her father's previous role as gym leader with honor, but she also states that she one day wishes to surpass his abilities as a trainer. Despite this goal, she certainly does not forgo having respect for him, as shown in the Celadon department store when she argues with fellow gym leader Faulkner about which of their fathers is the stronger trainer. Interestingly enough, despite the events of Gen 2 being the first time that we encounter Janine in the games, chronologically speaking, we can actually find her prior to her sudden employment in the Fuchsia City Gym. Gym. Three years prior, in fact. In Fire Red and Leaf Green, the Red and Blue remakes, if the player goes to the Fuchsia City Zoo in front of the Safari Zone, Janine can actually be found there where she states that her father is currently training her to use Poison-type Pokemon. In addition to one day defeating her father, Janine also appears to want to establish a legacy of her own, as she often tells challengers to remember her name. Despite her ambitious and stubborn nature and likely undergoing harsh training under her Ninja Master father, Janine is known to be quite kind-hearted and very gracious in defeat. However, to have a role like she does at her age must mean that she's quite the child prodigy, and she does have an Elite Four member to train her after all. Given all of this, the question remains, how strong is Janine really? The first time we encounter her is very shortly after she became a gym leader, so surely she has become even stronger by now. Using all of her appearances in the main series games, it's time to construct Janine's best possible team. It's time to find out her true power. The first time we're able to battle Janine in the main series occurs in Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, where she of course serves as the gym leader of the Fuchsia City Gym, having taken it over from her father Koga after his promotion to the Indigo Plateau. After having collected all eight badges from Johto, the protagonist, either Ethan or Chris, decides to take on all the Kanto gym leaders as well, leading us to Fuchsia City. Just like her father, Janine runs the gym with its invisible walls and is even in a disguise when we first talk to her, but we soon discover the truth about who she is. In this battle, Janine starts out with a level 36 Crobat, followed by two level 36 Weezings, a level 33 Ariados, and a level 39 Venomoth. The next time we encounter Janine occurs in the Gold and Silver remakes, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where unlike the original, she can actually be battled on two separate occasions to give us a better idea of her true strength as a trainer. The first battle occurs under similar circumstances as the originals, where we challenge her for the Soul Badge. Except this time around, she's become way more powerful, and this might be due to the fact that this time around, she recognizes that we're the champion and have already beaten her father in the Elite Four. In this battle, Janine starts with her Crobat now at level 47, her Weezing now at level 44, two Ariados at level 47, and her Venomoth now at level 50. However, Hard Gold and Soul Silver also gave us the unique ability to rematch Janine after we've obtained all 16 badges across the two regions. If the player goes to the Pokemon League reception gate near the Route 22 entrance on any evening from 4 to 6 p.m., Janine can be found there where it turns out she's actually on her way to bring her father his lunch at the Pokemon League. After explaining this, she'll give the player her phone number, after which she can be called on Monday afternoons to arrange a rematch at the Saffron City Fighting Dojo. In this rematch, Janine has become even more powerful powerful and has some new additions to her team as well. She starts the battle with a level 52 Crobat, followed by her Weezing now at level 56, a brand new Toxicroak at level 52, her Ariados at level 58, her Venomoth at level 59, and a brand new Drapion at level 55. With the Toxicroak and Drapion perhaps proving that she might have traveled to the Sinnoh region for additional training. The final time we can battle Janine occurs in Gen 5's Black 2 and White 2 where she participates in the Pokemon World Tournament, which is kind of interesting because as an Elite Four member, Koga does not. Janine can be found battling in three different tournament styles in which she rotates between two different teams of six. Keep in mind that the World Tournament automatically sets all Pokemon to level 50, but we can get a good idea of new additions to her collection since the events of Gen 4 and how competitively viable her Pokemon have become. She also has some highly competitively viable movesets and items on her Pokemon, even better than her Heart Gold and Soul Silver rematch setups. In the Kanto Leaders Tournament, Janine has her Venomoth, Weezing, a brand new Tentacruel, her Ariados, a brand new Arbok, and her Crobat. In the Type Expert and World Leaders Tournaments, Janine operates by rotating between her Venomoth, Weezing, Tentacruel, a brand new Roserade, a brand new Nidoqueen, and finally her Crobat. 
Although Janine isn't able to be battled in the Pokemon Yellow remakes, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, it's worthy to know that these are the first games where we hear indications that Koga might not remain Gym Leader of Fuchsia, or at least that his ambitions lie elsewhere. Upon defeating him in his rematch battle in these games, in which he knows we're the champion, Koga says, With trainers like you and Trace, the Pokemon League must be a place of formidable strength. Truly, it is something to be proud of. As it so happens, I have been thinking of aiming to join the Elite Four myself. This right here seems to be the watershed moment that led to Janine's opportunity to prove herself as gym leader. It's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Using all of her appearances in the main series Pokemon games, let's construct Janine's best possible team. The first pick for her best team is going to go to none other than her Tentacruel from her Black 2 and White 2 World Tournament teams, in which it's automatically set to level 50. However, given that this is the greatest challenge Janine has ever faced, and all the rest of her World Tournament Pokémon are at least level 52 in their other appearances, and time has passed since Gen 4, we can assume that this thing would be at least level 52 as well. In the Gen 7 Complete Pokédex metagame, Tentacruel is in the UU tier in competitive battling, and ever so slightly has the highest competitive placement of any of her Pokemon. Tentacruel's got some great base stats including a surprising 100 base speed along with a whopping 120 special defense, and it could definitely work well as a special wall for this team but could also fulfill a tank role with a decent special attack. With powerful stab moves that Janine has on it like Scald with a chance to burn and Sludge Bomb, along with Giga Drain for recovery, Ice Beam for coverage, and Toxic Spice for a great hazard move, Tentacruel provides some great coverage against super effective ground types which are otherwise a pretty big threat for this team. The second spot is going to go to Janine's Crobat from her Heart Gold and Soul Silver Fighting Dojo Rematch Battle, in which it's at level 52. Crobat is currently also in the upper UU tier in competitive battling. Crobat is a wickedly fast Pokemon, which is very helpful for Janine's otherwise kind of tanky team. If you include Ubers, alternate forms, and Mega Evolutions, Crobat is the 17th fastest Pokemon out of nearly 1,000, and also has a pretty decent attack stat to go along with it. With moves that Janine has on it like Stab Brave Bird, Stab Wing Attack, Stab Cross Poison, U-Turn for pivoting capabilities, Super Fang to do a guaranteed half of the opponent's HP and damage, Toxic to poison the opponent or Hypnosis to put it to sleep, and the potential for Defog through Move Tutor to help with Field Hazards, Spikes especially, Crobat has so many different roles it can play, from Utility, to Defensive, to Hyperspeed Offense, etc., and will certainly serve as a nuisance, if not a big threat for opposing teams. The third pick for Janine's best team is going to go to her highest level Pokémon, her Venomoth from her Heart Gold and Soul Silver rematch team, in which it's at level 59. Venomoth is currently in the RUBL tier in terms of competitive battling, meaning it's above the RU tier but doesn't quite make the UU tier by usage. With powerful stab moves like Bug Buzz and Sludge Bomb along with Psychic for coverage and utility moves like Double Team, Toxic, and Sleep Powder, Venomoth is a passable nuisance. However, it does have one trick up its sleeve, Quiver Dance through Level Up. Quiver Dance simultaneously raises Venomoth's special attack, special defense, and speed, quickly making this thing into a terrifying special sweeper on this team. The fourth pick for Janine's best team is a highly important one. Her Drapion from her Heart Gold and Soul Silver rematch team, in which it's at level 55. Drapion is currently in the RU tier and provides the amazing dark typing to offensively and defensively counter Janine's massive psychic weakness on all of her other Pokemon. With great attack, defense, and speed for a tank roll, and powerful stab moves like Cross Poison, Crunch, or Stab Knockoff to get rid of the opponent's item, along with Ice Fang, Thunder Fang, or Fire Fang through level up for coverage, and Swords Dance to raise its attack massively, Drapion can switch up the battle hugely by switching into an anticipated psychic move and either setting up with Swords Dance or preemptively knocking off the item of an incoming Pokemon to stop the opponent's momentum in their tracks. And the second last slot is going to go to Janine's Roserade from her Black 2 and White 2 Type Expert and World Leaders World Tournament teams in which it's set to level 50 but is probably around level 52 like Tentacruel would likely be. Roserade is currently in the RU tier with great special attack, special defense, and speed stats and adds another Pokemon on the team that isn't weak to ground and can counter them quite well. With stab moves like Leaf Storm and Sludge Bomb along with Leech Seed for recovery and Sleep Powder to put the opponent to sleep, Roserade rounds out this team's offensive capabilities really well to counter water and ground types which might otherwise be a bit of a struggle to deal with. 
And the final spot on Janine's best team is going to go to her Weezing from her Heart Gold and Soul Silver Fighting Dojo rematch battle in which is at level 56. Weezing is currently in the NU tier in competitive battling but provides a great physically defensive presence to this team with a massive 120 defense stat, and also the levitate ability to not only avoid more ground weakness, but also to serve as a great switch in to any predicted ground moves to switch the momentum. With moves that Janine has on it like Stab Sludge Bomb along with Flamethrower, Shadow Ball, and Thunderbolt for coverage, Pain Split for Recovery, Explosion for a Last Resort, and Will-O-Wisp to burn the opponent not only for residual damage but also to lower their attack when they're likely already struggling with Weezing's defense. Weezing can definitely serve as a wall to prevent the opposing team from gaining momentum in the first place or stop it if it does. Janine does have some other great options in her arsenal that could possibly find a place on this team but are outclassed for one reason or another. First is her level 52 Toxicroak, which definitely would be on this team if it weren't for merely adding a 4x Psychic Weakness. For this reason, it's outclassed by Drapion. Also possible is her level 50 plus Needle Queen, which unfortunately adds more ground and poison weakness, and is outclassed by some other choices on this team like Venomoth, but could potentially be used for its Stealth Rock capability. Well, there we go everyone, we have discovered Janine's true power and unveiled her strongest possible team in the main series games. Janine's team definitely covers its weaknesses very well, given that this is a monotype team, especially with ground not being super effective on 4 out of 6 members despite them all being poison type. If you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more from this series, please be sure to leave a like, share it on social media, and subscribe with notifications on by hitting that bell icon if you haven't already. All forms of support help a ton and are super appreciated. Don't forget to comment down below with what trainer you wish to see featured next. The comment with the most likes will pick the trainer for the next week's episode and will be featured on screen. Before we go, I'd just like to give a quick shout out to my patrons, thank you guys so much for your support. If you enjoy my content and would like to support the channel and get some cool perks, the link to my Patreon page will be in the description below. This has been Self Spectre and I'll see you guys next time for some more True Power.